I learned about transformers in school, but it was always such a complicated topic. And it never made sense because it's a really simple thing what's going on with the transformer. Now, a transformer, for anyone who doesn't know, is basically uh, like the gearbox for electronical stuff. Like, you know when you're riding a bike and you can switch the gears and you can either pedal really easy, but, but your bike goes slow, or it's hard to pedal, but your bike goes faster, you're basically swapping strength for speed. Now, uh, a transformer does that electrically with electrons, so you can swap voltage for current. As long as your overall power stays the same. So say you have a voltage of 3, 3 volts, and you have a current of also 3, then your overall power is voltage times your current, which is 9. So you can swap this for this as long as your overall power stays the same. So if you double your voltage, you have to cut your current in half. So that's 6 times 1 and a half, which still equals 9. And you can do it both ways. Um, and this is a basic drawing of what a basic transformer looks like. So over here you have low voltage coming in, high voltage coming out, and where you've got the, the low voltage you, you, you'd have a higher current, and where you have the higher voltage you'd have a lower current. Now how does this work? It's super, super simple. But just to go over the electricity first, voltage is how hard the electricity is pushing. It's like the force, like how strong the electricity is. And the current is sort of like the speed of the electricity, but it's, uh, it's more like the difference between a skinny river and a fat river that are moving the same speed. It's just the fat river is moving more material. So that would be a higher current. Here, we've got our transformer. And it's basically a bunch of copper wire wrapped around here and a bunch of copper wire wrapped around here. And the middle part is just a chunk of iron. And iron because uh, it sticks to magnets. It's good with magnetic fields. It creates strong magnetic fields. There are other materials that you can do for all this stuff, but this is just a very basic one. Now say we're putting electricity in over here and we want to get different electricity out over here. So over here, say we've got three, three volts pushing through and we've got three amps. So we're gonna represent that by a three by three square. So that's three volts pushing that way. And then the width is the three amps. And that's coming through here. Now to get the transformer to work, you actually have to reverse the electricity. It has to go that way for a split second, around these coils, and then go the opposite direction. Come on, that way. So you're just going back and forth. Because what, what happens is, when the electricity starts moving one way, it creates the magnetic field in the iron. But then once the magnetic field is created, the electricity has no more work there to do. So it just starts flying through the wires, creating heat, and everything melts, and it's terrible. So what you do with alternating current is the electricity will go one direction, create the magnetic field going one way, and then reverse the electricity and that collapses the, it, it like destroys the magnetic field and then reverses it the opposite direction. So it keeps doing work to flip the magnetic field that's, that's in the iron core. And um, the direction of the magnetic field is not important for this right now. What is important is the amount of electricity that's going through here. So what happens when the electricity is moving? It creates the magnetic field and the magnetic field also creates uh, Electric, electricity, like basically moves the electrons uh, around it. So if there's copper on this side, it'll move the electrons in the, in this copper side over here. So uh, the way the electricity and the magnetism works, you can put one in and get the opposite out. So what we're doing here is we're putting the electricity in here, moving it, creating a magnetic field, and the magnetic field creates this, the same electricity on the other side. So basically you take this and move it over here. This only has two wires where this has six. So this same amount of electricity is getting spread out over three wires. So, so in this section here, the exact same thing is happening. It's just the electricity happens to be spread out over more pieces because it's cut up into more chunks so that when the electricity actually gets out to the end and comes flowing straight out, 
you see that it's totally changed. Now it's 9 volts and only 1 amp. And it, it works the, the, the same way going the other direction. If you move this electricity into here, as it's going around, like each one of these is in a separate wire. It's, I mean, it's all the same piece of wire, but it's in a separate piece going around the thing. It induces the same electricity over here, and that all fits in one of these wires because there's only there's one of these for every three of those. And when you get that out, you get three volts, three amps. And this works with a lot of different numbers. I mean, basically any number. Say you've only got one volt and three amps coming through here. Well, that means you're creating one volt and three amps on the other side over here, which will end up being spread over the three wires. And that means when you get to the end, this one will come out, then the next one will come out, and the next one will come out. And you're basically turning it sideways. So you took your three volts, one amp, switched it to one volt, three amps. And it works the, the same going the opposite direction. So if you got three times as many coils here, you switch everything by a factor of three. If you've got 20 times as many coils over here, you switch everything by a factor of 20. That's about it. There isn't much more to it. Now, many moons ago when I kind of figured this out and how simple it is, it made motors, microphones, a lot of other electrical things just very easy to understand.